Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. Jeremy from Tested. As you can see, we're on location this week for early episode of Projections because we're gonna play some VR. Oculus invited us to a little party. And they are announcing the new headset, the Rift S, which is an incremental improvement over the Oculus Rift desktop there, VR headset. There is a lot of suspicion online. There were some uh, outlets that have been sold out of the Rift recently. And so people were hoping maybe they'd announce something. And then uh, sure enough, yeah, we have the Rift S announced to us. Uh, as you said, it's an incremental improvement. Um, they're calling it uh, not revolutionary. Yes. But you know, like you said, an incremental improvement. It's not the Rift 2. So the big thing is, of course, it is an inside out tracking system. They took the inside tracking from the upcoming Oculus Quest camera around the headset and so you don't need to put your cameras outside in your room whether your it's two sensors, cameras yeah. or sensors uh, you can just put the headset on plug it into your pc or a laptop and get desktop vr mm -hmm. yeah super easy windows mixed reality has been doing this for a while i think the, the onboarding process is going to be appreciated by everybody who plugs this into their computer um, obviously you need fewer usb jacks too because you don't need those sensor jacks uh, they also added an additional camera to the inside out tracking system on the top which they're saying is to improve the tracking volume for the controllers. This is important, right? Not necessarily just for the headset, but for the controllers, which still use the Constellation style tracking with the LEDs on the outside that are being picked up by the headset cameras. Now there's even more of a tracking volume compared to the Quest. Yeah, the controllers are actually the same as the Quest controllers. Mm -hmm. And if you buy a Quest, you can actually repair and just have more of those same controllers. The optics are also different too, the actual display and the lenses. They're inheriting a lot of the same display technologies from the Oculus Go. And in fact, it uses an LCD panel with the same resolution of that as the on the Go. Yeah, I was surprised by that. I thought it would be a Quest that was plugged into the computer, but it's really a Quest Go, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, and with those lenses, they say the lenses are even more improved from the Go uh, because there's a bigger sweet spot, so you can do digital IPD. I know a lot of people out there like the movable lenses, the movable ITD on the Rift, and which is also on the Quest, but on the Rift S, it's gonna be digital only. Norm got a chance to sit down with Nate Mitchell and talk about the new hardware announcement, so let's see what he had to say. So of course I'm joined now by Nate Mitchell, head of VR product. Nate, uh, you have product to announce we do. at this event. Yeah. Uh, Rift S, of course, is what we're talking about. Um, so many questions. Let's start with uh, where did Rift S come from? Yeah. So I think for a long time we've wanted to evolve the Oculus Rift. You know, it is an extremely uh, successful, well-loved platform, uh, something you know many of us are still using today. And we wanted to bring uh, a lot of improvements to the device. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, very common feedback that we hear, you know, hey, we want a higher resolution display, we want uh, improved optics. Hey, wouldn't it be nice if we could have sort of out of the box room scale? And uh, so we took a look at uh, the options for the product and decided, hey, we should absolutely do something here. Um, frankly, it's a little overdue. And so, yeah, we're really excited to be uh, launching the Oculus Rift S uh, this spring. It's going to be $399. Um, and uh, we can't wait for consumers to get their hands on it. So you might understand this replaces Rift in the marketplace? It does. So Rift S is going to uh, wholly re replace Rift. We're actually in the process of phasing out Rift right now. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, and we think consumers are going to love Rift S as a replacement. So I know you say Rift, and it's the same ecosystem. Same like ecosystem. Guys, same store, same platform, the games. Yes. Like, even though there's slight technical differences, of That's course, right. uh, for people looking to get into a desktop-based headset right now, there are differences, though. There right? are for differences. For example, the, the Rift has a mechanical IBD adjustment. You guys That's are moving right. to software. In designing a product, it's all about making these decisions. That's right. right? So how do you guys get, feel comfortable with something like a software IPD, and what's that range supported? Yep. So basically, um, as you mentioned, whenever we're developing products, it really is a game of trade-offs, or trade-offs, right? How do we deliver the most value um, to the customer uh, at the right price? And for Rift S, we ultimately decided that we wanted to go with a single panel LCD. It's actually very similar to the LCD screen that's in Go. It's a fast switch mm -hmm. LCD. Um, uh, that means that really we needed to move to uh, a digital IPD adjust system. Now, digital IPD adjust is not going to have the same reach in terms of uh, percentiles uh, for folks with varying um, interpupillary distances. So we won't be able to cover the same broad set of users, but we should be able to get pretty close. And uh, during a lot of UR and testing, we really do feel like that it's it's a pretty good balance of all uh, all things considered. So for people who may have uh, been extremes of that, the Rift for now until late spring or whenever, it may be. they can still pick up one of those That's 
That's right. If you're in a very narrow IPD or a very wide IPD that is sort of outside the boundaries of what we're able to accommodate with mm -hmm. uh, with Rift S, then yes, you are probably best off grabbing yourself a Rift uh, for the time being. The other option, obviously, is Quest, yeah. um, which actually does feature uh, mechanical IPD right. adjust. Right. You say that Rift inherits, or Rift S inherits a lot of the features and learns less things, less learn from Go, for example, yeah. the the optics and the same kind of screen resolution. Does yeah. that mean like that kind of digital IPD goes backward and, and Go can take advantage of that? I actually don't know exactly what the plan is for digital IPD on Go, but we can follow up on that just after this. Mm. So okay, there's a the LCD uh, fast switching. It's also now 80 hertz. Yes. Now how did you guys land on that? What yeah. we've heard for so long, 90 hertz is where you want to be for comfort. So we've been experimenting uh, a lot uh, and doing a lot of development between uh, you know 60 hertz, 72 hertz, 80 hertz, 90 hertz, and actually a bunch of our products are varied in terms of their refresh rates. Ultimately, where we landed um, is 80 hertz for Rift S, and there's a two key reasons for that. Um, one is that we really do feel like that still delivers that same level of presence and immersion that mm -hmm. is so, so important uh, to a great VR experience. You know, Rift definitely set the benchmark and we wanted to make sure we weren't really diminishing that. We really feel like, uh, based on our experience, uh, and development that 80 hertz still delivers on that in a big way. The other advantage to 80 hertz is actually that we have a higher resolution display in Rift S. Mm. And so by lowering the frame rate uh, ever so slightly, we are able to actually hold roughly the min spec and the rec spec from Rift. Right. Now this was a really important consideration and something we were trying to navigate very carefully. We really didn't want to increase the minimum rec spec for Rift S in a way that basically made it so, hey, I'm a Rift user, I love my device or my device today, I want to upgrade to Rift S, but I need a new computer to do so, or in a way that would actually shrink the total addressable market for developers. So sort of uh, as we navigated that, we landed on 80 hertz being the right balance of all things. Um, you've had a chance to try the device, uh, you know, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, it's comfortable for sure, and, and certainly some people who are used to 90, they, they may or may not. And also on the PC side, right. there's a lot of configurations that you can do. But I also see, is this a limitation of LCD fast switching? Or? There are some limitations of the screens, absolutely. Mm. Um, but again, I think where we're landing on 80 hertz actually works really, really well. A Quest, just for comparison, is 72 hertz. Right, right. And then Go, of course, can do 60 or up or, to 72. Exactly so right. with LCDs, there's variability. That's right. Yeah, is there any chance of clocking this higher, this panel? We'll see. Okay. Um, now, Lenovo is a manufacturing partner for this. That's absolutely it does right. look a lot like their Windows Mixed Reality headset yep. with the same comfortable Halo design. A lot of similarities. Does them taking over the manufacturing improve the, the kind of supply chain for, for this? I, I mean, I think so. I think when we, uh, you know, Oculus is still uh, a new company. We're still developing our manufacturing and supply chain arm of things. Um, Early on, we were looking for a partner to help us speed up uh, the development of Rift S, looking for someone who could help bring complementary experience to ours to develop uh, an even better product at a better price, faster. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, we found this great partnership uh, with the Lenovo team, who's done a lot in AR and VR. Really uh, fantastic experience. And so we were able to draw from a lot of their learnings to uh, take Rift S in a direction with a halo strap architecture, um, much improved for weight distribution. It really depends on your head shape and size, but for a lot of people, they do you find it a lot more comfortable, a lot easier to don mm. and doff the headset sort of uh, on the fly. And then the depth adjust, obviously, uh, which allows you to move the, the headset itself in and out, it makes it a lot uh, easier to configure for various uh, folks' faces. So it's a matter of taking their learnings and, and being able to put your the front of the headset with their back of the headset. Was there any consideration for like a, a hinge? We talked design. about a hinge. Actually, some of the challenges with hinge are actually cost. Mm. Um, and so, right. again, what we were aiming for, uh, really trying to hit that 399 price point, it didn't make sense to go in there. And we do have Pass Through Plus, which is obviously a big advantage over some of the other uh, headsets, VR headsets that are out there that feature some sort of pass through technology. Um, but yeah, I think we're really happy about where the partnership has landed us and the resulting product, which really is sort of the best of Oculus and the best of Lenovo combined. Well, let's talk about Pass Through Plus and also yeah. Insight, right? Because yeah. this inherits the inside out tracking that you have developed on, on Quest, which you're yeah. very confident about, but that extra camera on top. And what does that get us in terms of coverage? And are there going to still be rare case points where you know things like Echo Arena, you're yeah. grabbing things behind you, will that Absolutely. still work? Yep. So Oculus Insight, you know, as we've talked about, is our sort of innovative inside out tracking system. It's slam and natural feature based, um, very high accuracy, very low latency. So 
we talked about it a lot in the context of Quest, and what we wanted to do was bring that same experience to the Rift platform for a bunch of different reasons. Um, some of the advantages of Insight, obviously out of the box room scale for folks. Mm -hmm. uh, you also have uh, the removal of our external sensors, which right. is a very typical ask from people. You know, oftentimes uh, a lot of our most frequent users are like, hey, I use my device and I bump the sensor, now I need to reset up Guardian. Maybe they had to take down their system. So this kind of eliminates a huge number of the cables, the complexity, makes it really easy to use. Um, you asked about the fifth camera. So we added a fifth camera to Rift S to increase the overall tracking volume of the device, which gives you a little bit more uh, greater compatibility with the existing Rift library. Now the existing Rift library is a bit um, nuanced too, because some of it's designed for two sensors, some of it's designed for more than that, yep. uh, in terms of the touch content, right? But um, so yeah, obviously some users are using three sensors. Or more. Or more, or more, <laughs> yes. Um, anyway, so you do have a, a really, I think, outstanding field of view for tracking. Um, you're absolutely right that given uh, that the, cam the sensors on the headset are tracking the controllers, there are going to be certain places where you're able to occlude uh, the controller from the headset. And, or up close. Even. Or up close. And ex that's exactly right. There's basically two areas which are problematic right here, or if you can just do something else, right? If you put your mm -hmm. arm over top of the controller, for right. example. Um, so that is going to be the trade off with, the, uh, with Insight. However, we really think the benefits of the experience outweigh uh, that disadvantage. Although, yes, there's absolutely some trade offs here. You guys spend a lot of resources and, and people developing consolation, right? From supporting yes. two cameras, three cameras, even more. A lot of people with elaborate setups. Yep. You know, does that team now move? the insiders constellation and outside in tracking still something you see being a part of the vision for desktop VR. So a bunch of the folks who worked on Constellation are working on Insight now. I will say that Insight actually leverages Constellation as well. So the touch controllers on Quest and Rift S um, do have those LED constellations, uh, again, very similar to uh, the original touch. <clears throat> and so we're leveraging Constellation, actually, a sort of an evolved version of Constellation that we would call like Constellation mm -hmm. almost 2.0, uh, to track the controllers as well. So it is one team working on both things. As far as outside in for PC, for us, we really are pushing more into uh, inside out. Just the sort of convenience, uh, the added benefit of just having out of the box, room scale, all this stuff, is just such a big win for users that we really think it's the right direction to go. Um, and, uh, and yeah. Was there consideration of having both in a, in a headset, outside in and inside you out? Know, we've talked about it at times. Um, we'll have to see you know, what customers want, what the response is from folks. Uh, yeah. Definitely, the way we're going right now with Quest and Rift S is definitely a greater focus on making sure inside out is phenomenal uh, for all use cases. And, uh, and we'll see where that takes us. So pass through plus, right? The ability to see your outside world using the inside cameras yes. pass through as maybe your first experience as you put on uh, a Rift S to even do setup. We saw glimpses of the new Chaperone, yep. the Guardian system, Guardian um, system yep. mode. Um, now, does that run at 80 hertz? Are you going to see basically, or is that like a, a 30 hertz experience? So the experience is roughly in line with the, uh, the refresh rate of the overall experience. And that's because we're using basically ASW and reprojection mm. to allow us to deliver uh, an experience that is much more in line with actually what you would see in the real world. And so we're able to, again, change the frame rate here dynamically. Um, what you get is a much more comfortable pass-through experience uh, that does have things positioned in the world much more accurately than what you would see in sort of raw uh, reprojected um, camera, natural camera-based pass-through. So anyway, this is something that we're really, really excited about. Uh, obviously, it's going to be used for Guardian. Uh, lets you sort of when you put on the device, you're going to see pass-through plus as your experience immediately. Quickly draw a Guardian bound you around you, and then you're good to go. Uh, we're also enabling it so you can actually toggle pass-through plus from dash sort of on the fly. So if you want to get a glimpse of what's going on in your room or you need to move a chair in your space or you know, take care of something, you can do that too. Are you allowing developers to have that incorporated in game uh, content? We are not enabling folks to leverage Pass-Through Plus just yet. That is something we'll talk more about. Um, hopefully in the future. But for launch, we're really just focused on enabling this core use case, which is really frequent feedback. Again, we've heard from folks, right? I really want to be able to see my uh, surroundings, want to be able to grab that cup of coffee or find my touch controllers. And this really helps the users do that in a much more convenient way. That vision data, I imagine, could be leveraged also in the future for all sorts of purposes, from things like hand tracking, object tracking. Is that something you guys think about? So, 
you know, the sensors on the headset give us a lot of flexibility in terms of future features. Right now, we're focused on the core feature set, which is really, you know, sixed off, uh, sixed off tracking with touch. Uh, whether or not we enable more sort of mixed reality or hand tracking based experiences is something we'll talk about in the future. Sure. I got to ask about price, right? You're launching yeah. the same price essentially as, you know, as, as Quest, but from my understanding is that it doesn't have the CPU GPU, the, the SOC, not, has not. extra camera, so why are these the, the same price? Yeah, so again, it's a matter of different trade-offs for the device. Ultimately, you know, we went with a uh, different architecture, a very different architecture with a different, slightly modified inside out, uh, inside system. Um, where we're landing on both products uh, is this sweet spot, right? This 399 price point. We think it's the right price point for both products. We think. For either one, uh, it's the absolute best uh, VR product you can buy at that price. On Rift S, you're getting the entire uh, Rift catalog, the Rift platform, the Rift content library, which you know is best in class. And on Quest, you're jumping into an entirely standalone experience with, again, a fantastic uh, content library, over 50 titles at launch. So um, we actually feel really good about where these are landing. Hopefully, we're able to bring down the cost on both these products over time. You know, Rift started out at $599 for the headset plus $200 for the touch controllers. That's a $799 product, um, and we've been able to cost that down. We probably won't be able to cost down uh, Quest and Rift S so aggressively, but certainly, hopefully, we'll be able to cost down these products over time. Our goal at the end of the day is getting as many users into this ecosystem as possible, and that's really what we're pushing on. And this feels like that's going to satisfy that market. Now, for the higher end of the market, the people who want to spend $800, $1,000 on a headset, is there going to be something for them? Are you still thinking about them? Nothing to announce at this time on that front. Um, for us, in a big way, we're focused on uh, this sort of $399 you know, uh, price point area where we can bring as many users into the space as possible. And um, anyway, we'll have more to share you know, as we go forward. A lot of events coming up. A lot of events this year. coming up. Yeah. <laughs> Although, definitely this year for us, uh, Quest and Rift S are the big focus uh, and where we're putting a lot of our time and energy and, uh, and investment in content as well. Well, thank you for time, mate. It's great yeah, chat with you as always. Great to see you, Noah. All right, so now we've both had a chance to yeah. use the Rift S, and I think it's ergonomics is the big noticeable difference for me. In what way? In that it technically is a little bit heavier than the Rift, mm -hmm. but because it uses that Halo strap design, something inherited from their partnership with Lenovo, uh, it's actually comfort, more comfortable, I think. It doesn't feel at all heavy. I mean, even when I was holding it, it feels like a pretty manageable device. Um, and that was just in my hands. But yeah, when I put it on, it, I didn't feel any different than the Rift. It's still very comfortable. My big concern was going to be the audio, and it kind of remains. Like, how is that going to sound when I get in my own environment? Because right. they built the audio into the headset in the same way that they do with the Quest and the Go which is kind of an open speaker system, right? Where the, the sound gets piped this way and you can hear it just fine, but it's not going to be, I suspect, the full range of sound that you get from the Rift speakers, which I actually am a big fan of. Yeah, those were like nice premium speakers that were built into the Rift, and I think it was probably a cost decision yeah. not to have those flip down speakers. And, but there was a headphone jack, so you can plug in your own headphones. But it's, there was on the Vive too. I know, I know, yeah, yeah. Uh, in terms of tracking, I was able to get a full range of movement. I mm -hmm. did the thing where I put yeah. my hand behind my back and moved it up and tried to throw a thing. And mm -hmm. you know, as if you turn your head, once your field of view is within your hand, right. it's gonna snap to tracking. You never see it actually snapping, it's just there. There's a little bit of space right in front of the of the sensors where it, it gets a little confused, but it's not much. It's not yeah. much at all. I think people aren't even gonna encounter that very often. Uh, I can imagine it with a bow and arrow potentially, but you'll learn. You'll learn where that sweet spot is. I'm more concerned with apps we can't play here. I want to play the Echo Arena, the Echo Combat, you know, those games that that really have your locomotion tied to a full 360 range of controller movement. Yeah. The headset stuff is, I think that's going to be great because the headset can no longer be occluded by your desk or a chair or what have you between your sensor and the headset. Now it's just free roaming and it's obviously, you know, built in room scale. It's those controllers, it remains my concern as it is with the Quest, even with the Rift with that additional sensor. I want to play games that really require full movement before we can truly judge, is it as good as Rift tracking? They have both the Quest and the Rift S here, and I was able to go back and forth just to compare OLED and LCD. Yeah. And OLED, the colors I still think are more vibrant. It, mm -hmm. the, the black levels are deeper. You know, it is noticeably an LCD. Now, what's less noticeable is the 80 hertz. I couldn't tell that it was lower frame rate right. at all. Even the 72 hertz that you can get on the go, I feel is acceptable. I notice when it drops down to 60, but I think it's, I feel smooth to me at 72. That's gonna be one of those things that's personal. You know, how do your eyes 
respond to those re refresh rates. Yeah, and I was asking Nate, you know, why stick at 80? Because mm -hmm. if it's for performance, because it is a higher resolution screen, does this mean that this is a panel that can go to 90 and they're just locking at 80? Mm -hmm. Or is it the other way around? Is it because it's inherited from the Go? Is this a 72 hertz panel that they're pushing to 80? That's mm -hmm. going to be a really big thing if for people want to push this panel higher than 80 potentially right. on the desktop because you're going to have the horsepower mm -hmm. if you have a high-end system. You probably liked the um, the grid display of the LCD because you've always complimented yep. the PSVR for having that. Uh, when I got the Rift S first on, that was the first thing I noticed was it felt higher res and it felt nice and smooth and grid-like, which I, I appreciate that. Yeah, just the, the sub-pixel arrangement on the yeah. PSVR OLED, but RGB stripe is exactly. what, we, what we want for this. Uh, the, the long and short of it is that you know we'll, we'll get this headset in for, for but for people with the Rift already, mm -hmm. it doesn't feel like it's gonna be an essential upgrade for people with the Rift, what? right? Unless you're gonna be playing desktop VR, all different parts of your house. If you have your camera set up, yeah, you're you're good. Your IR your sensors, right? Yeah, your sensors. No, you're right. That's an interesting question uh, because you're still gonna be tethered. Do, the question is, do you want that higher resolution or not? Because there is a noticeable resolution bump. Um, I think it's not, since it's not the Quest, it's, it's not the, the Quest displays, it's not gonna be as high as you would get on this on the other new headset, the mm -hmm. Quest. Um, but it's still noticeable. So it's gonna be a question of do you want that or not? I would say new buyers, definitely. Like be, between the Quest and this, you know, we of course the tracking remains to be seen, but I think by and large, this is going to be so much easier to set up. Plus, we haven't even talked about this new pass-through pass -through system. Pass-through plus. Pass plus looks really, really compelling. You'll now be able to basically see the world uh, with the headset on in a way that is true one-to-one -one and stereo. Yep, and Nate inferred that, implied that the pass-through plus system would actually allow you to have higher than 30 FPS frame rate, you know, close to that 80 hertz really? when they pass through that visual. So we really want to see what that's like. They didn't have that on demo here. Yeah. It's on the floor. Well, the, wait till the Rift S is closer. And can to that be incorporated into games, you can't. experiences? Not yet. They said not yet. Okay. Yeah, not yet, no, no, but they're not closing our door on that. You know, I want right. hand tracking in this stuff. They have the cameras there. Uh, but for people, again, I think who have the Rift, hold on, wait, don't throw away your cameras. For sure, your sensors. I don't think anyone's sure. throwing away their VR hardware. Yeah, no, not yet. <laughs> Definitely not yet. And this is not the Rift 2. That's an important point, right? And, and we know that there are incredible technologies that they're developing in Abrash's studio. Yeah. Uh, this is not that. I mean, this is very much an incremental improvement over the Rift there. And I do see the appeal of inside out tracking. I think that's gonna simplify a lot of the setup process and the usability, not to mention resources because you don't need to dedicate so many USB ports. And as Nate ended with, you know, their focus this year is Quest and Rift S. Mm -hmm. And so what I took away from that is don't expect a Rift 2 this year. No, yeah. I, I would totally agree with that. But but that doesn't rule it out for the future. Of course. I, you know, I mean, it'll be interesting to see how well the Quest does compared to the Rift S. I could imagine a future where if the Quest if the Quest performs substantially better and they start to see a future in VR that is clearly people are more interested in uh, on a mobile platform yep. all in one, then does it justify a Rift 2 or not? But does the if so, it's really going to depend on how well both of these units sell. I think that that's going to weigh heavily on their decision to see through with the major new technologies that they're researching. Yeah. So that's just the beginning of our coverage here at this event, and also, of course, at GDC this week. You're sticking around, playing more games. Yep. Stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Awesome.